Welcome to Colts Law. I'm Lawrence Owen, and with me, as usual, Colts Loyalist, and I have something special. Obviously, we all watched the game, or, well, most of us did. I watched the game, and Loyalist was at the game. So, a couple different perspectives when it comes to uh, what we saw in the Indianapolis Colts hosting the Carolina Panthers week one of the preseason. First and foremost, Loyalist. Let's talk about the first half, uh, offensively, defensively. What are some things that really stood out to you in the first half? Well, for me, the big thing that really stood out was the offense and the way they came out and, and how they, they Eason in the passing game. They allowed him to just find those nice, steady, consistent passes to Patman, you know what I mean, and, and really work the left side of the field, you know. But you could just see how they were – they were, you know, seven, eight yard, consistent, easy, easy pass and catch. You know what I mean? It just helped them get into this rhythm and stuff, you know. And it, and it, I think it also helped the offensive line seem to find their group and stuff. And then, you know, as far as the defense goes, I mean, it was enjoyable to watch the the, the first wave of guys, you know, really keeping pressure on the quarterback, whoever was there. You know, um, they were very aggressive. You know, the uh, – a lot of the bigger plays that Carolina got was due to the Colts, if anything, over aggressiveness. You know, like, you know, whenever a uh, quarterback looked like he was running flat, TJ Carey comes off this guy, boom, they connect down the right side of the field for their largest play of the day. And it was just simply because he was already committing to the quarterback as, you know, as a running, you know. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I was very pleased with the play, the solid play that we got. The running game, Marlon Max, so good to see him out there. Man, I'll tell you what, that was, you know, it was like you could feel it in the crowd whenever he got out there for the first plays and stuff. You know, every yard he did was just an extra, had extra energy, had, had extra meaning to it. So, yeah, from my point of view, it was a great day. What about your side? Well, from my point of view, offensively, it obvious it was nice to see Paris Campbell and Marlon Mack back, obviously, on the offensive side, both of them making some splash plays, showing uh, that they still have that burst. Uh, that they had prior to their injuries. And with, when it comes to the offense, offensive line, it took a moment for Jacob Eason to realize he, did, he was not going to have three or four seconds to sit there in the pocket and pick apart a part of defense. Um, the left tackle position was severely outmatched uh, in yesterday's game, and it showed where Eason got sacked three times and even a forced fumble. Uh, a couple of those obviously was had two of the three of those sacks were just flat due to um, either not good um, pass protection or uh, just a really good defensive play call against a specific offensive play call like on the rollout. Uh, that was designed for Eason to roll out to his right. There was no fourth and short. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, there was no one there to uh, to to counteract the defensive end and the uh, safety blitz. And by the time Eason faked the handoff and turned around to throw, by the time he got his head around, they were already there to sack him. Uh, he couldn't even throw the football away because it would have been. Um, you know, intentional grounding because he wasn't outside the tackle numbers. But once he got used to that, Easton looked really, really good. He was actually the highest rank, rated quarterback via PFF of any quarterback on any team through the first week of preseason. So that, that says something. <laughs> that says a That's lot. Awesome. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Because PFF generally doesn't give high ratings to Indianapolis Colts players. Um, <laughs> but, uh, that throw that he had to, uh, Paris Campbell, that 37 yard pass, beautifully thrown, uh, great touch, perfect accuracy, led him perfectly, uh, beautifully done defensively. I really enjoyed watching, uh, the, the pass, pass rush. Um, believe yeah. it or I thought Ben Banigou did well the, the entire game. Ben Banigou, I think, played uh, from start to finish. Uh, Kimoko Ture had a ton of pressures. Kimoko was so quick off the line that he drew 
three false start penalties on that left tackle of the Carolina Panthers. And it was yeah. so it was so dangerous that that right after he drew a false start penalty, he then did on the very next play, he did a stunt where where he come back up and around across right in front of the center, forcing a very bad pass um, on that play as well with another pressure. Uh, he, they didn't land. He did not land anything, but he forced a lot of bad plays with the pressure that he was getting. Um, so that, that that's that's very good. It's very encouraging. That was one of the things that, you know, two of the things that we were most worried about was quarterback play and pass rush, and I thought that both of those looked good in that preseason game. And they, and we yeah, gotta remember, he, they're all backups out there. Yeah, and Eason also he had a nice little rollout where he mm-hmm. was on the move, and he threw a nice pass to Strong, and it was nice part of that final drive that set up for the second half. You know, when we got, uh, you know, Sam Ellinger out there, and you got to see some more of the deeper players and stuff. So- hey guys, please smash that like button, hit subscribe if you're not subscribed, and tag that notification bell so that you're notified next time I go live. Don't forget, you can also share this video to your favorite social media. And please, open up that description of the video. In there, you find a link to my Patreon, which is only 5 bucks a month. You get all of my content, plus Patreon-specific content. And, of course, my merch shop. Right here. This video is sponsored by Newsbreak. Newsbreak is an app used over 1.5 billion times a month by people just like you to get local news via articles or videos by those who are focused on that specific area. People like myself, just use the link in the description of this video to download it. Then search a city, state, or someone specific like myself, Colts Law. Then make sure to follow them so you'll get all the news fresh as it comes out. I was curious, what did you think of Sam and how he looked out there yesterday? Sam Ellinger, he his mobility is a plus. Uh, he ran the ball. Okay, so he threw the football. Um, what fifteen times I think total, but he ran. Yeah, I, I, he he ran the ball eight times. He ran the ball one quarter of the times that he he touched the football. A quarter of mm-hmm. the plays he ran it, and he and he uh, gained three point six yards per carry on those runs on those eight runs. Uh, led the team not only in carries, but in yardage as well, um, which is okay. But when you have a scrambling quarterback, I generally want to see more than 3.6 yards per carry, you know, when they do decide to take off and run. Um, now, in, the, in, in his defense, you know, a few of those routes were actually designed run plays. Mm-hmm. And then a few of them, you know, were plays that where he was just extending and making the best out of, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, you know, the, you know, like the, he was awesome there at the goal line. Whenever it was like, you know, he dropped back, looked like it was a pause, you know, and then just boom, waited for things to open up and, and took – I feel like that was probably a design call play. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there was a couple deep passes that he had, one which was a beautiful throw by him where he led the receiver perfectly right over his shoulder, right in front of him with a, a defender draped all over his back. It was a great throw. Uh, great play. The other deep throw, we were lucky that it, it, it became a completion because uh, not only was it the guy draped all over the receiver's back, but it was underthrown, and the receiver made a great play, right? I mean, he, he turned around, reached around, one-handed, grabbed the football, and pulled it in. Uh, great play by the receiver. I actually, in the second half, was more impressed by the receivers than I was Sam Ellinger. I mean, that, that yes. was, it makes me think that the Colts are incredibly deep at their skill positions, not just running backs, but at wide receiver as well. And it's going to make the competition at the wide receiver uh, room very, very tight for those last two spots, especially with the way Mike Strong has been playing. Yes, Mike Strong. I mean, Tyler Vaughn represented himself well. I believe he's the one who you were talking about that mm-hmm. actually ended up making that catch. Um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'm telling you right now, the coaches have probably six to seven people that are, you know, Patman, he, he was consistent. He didn't have the big flash plays. You know, I think his longest was a little crosser. 
But I mean, <laughs> there was a lot of guys fighting for those last couple of spots. So yeah, another Ballard tough situation, but a good situation to be. One defender that kind of had an up and down night in the second half was Isaac Rochelle. Uh, Rochelle did get a lot of pressures up the middle, but there was one massive play where uh, he gave um, he gave away his position, um, gave up you know that hole that he was supposed to hold the edge, and he crashed yeah. in, and due to that gave up like a fifty yard run, you know, because he crashed inside. When you're playing an edge like that, you have to hold your position and hold that edge or something like that can happen. But there were other plays where multiple plays where he would force Will Greer out of the pocket and force him to make a play on the move, which was also, you know, in his, you know, pluses, you know, it made yeah. him look a lot better. <laughs> yeah, even that, even uh, Carolina's only touchdown Rochelle was in there. I mean, he just he, he man, if he could have just kind of under a little bit more control, I mean, Greer would have never got that pass off. You know, but Greer was able to roll out. And, was it Greer? I think it was. Was able to roll out and find the receiver in the back of the end zone. You know, but like I said, Rochelle had beat his guy. He had the quarterback in his sights. Just came in too hot. Yep. <laughs> lost lost control of himself and fell down right in front of the quarterback. Uh, so overall. Um, what do you think of the Indianapolis Colts' first preseason game? Oh, I love it. I, I, I'll tell you right now. There was a lot of younger talent. That, you know, we've been questioning ourselves, what are they going to really do? What are they going to show when the bullets are flying? Well, I'll tell you right now. The Colts came with their guns loaded. <laughs> they, I mean, the receivers performed very well. Like you said, the, the secondary had moments of really good coverage and stuff. You know what I mean? The, the D-line was was consistently probably for me the most consistent you know and then both the quarterbacks i mean they're not giving the coaches any break as far as making a decision so just you know after seeing the game i was just like okay let's see you next week absolutely don't forget that only three starters played for the indianapolis colts in this game we may see a few starters play next week against the minnesota vikings that'll be a little bit more interesting uh, Ellinger apparently will get the start with the the beginning of the game from what Coach Reich said, and then uh, Jacob Beeson will come in on, on the second half, kind of give them both uh, equal footing. We'll see what Sam Ellinger could do maybe with some other starters. Maybe Pittman and them will be playing with Ellinger. Uh, I, we have to wait and see, but... I like what I saw from this game against the Panthers. I thought the Indianapolis Colts looked good all the way across the board. Uh, and, you know, it, it makes me feel a little bit more at ease with some of the mm-hmm. things that we were worried about. But uh, thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like. Don't forget to subscribe and share this. And if you're watching on Newsbreak, go check me out on YouTube. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please go check out Newsbreak. And until next time, I'm Lawrence Owen with Colts Loyalists going over the Colts Panthers preseason week one. And until next time, have a good one. Just because a guy's a player's not a household name doesn't mean we can't make him a household name.